guys, welcome back. BDC Care here. We're back with season eight, episode 40 of our weekly Q&A video. If you're on YouTube, links in the description to get this on all major podcasting platforms. And if you're on podcast only for some reason, uh, we're BDC Care Gaming on YouTube, I guess. <laughs> you probably uh, like us. <laughs> it's the same same people, same stuff. So yeah, uh, call that a channel recommendation for you. Um, so before we get into questions, not a ton of questions this week, as always, you know, send in your questions if you want us to keep having things to talk about uh, that aren't just rambling about random stuff that we like. But in terms of random stuff that we like that we're going to ramble about, uh, we just got the Oculus Quest 2. Yeah. Um, and it's been, it's been a long time. So my sort of relationship with VR has been a very long one, even though uh, this is the first time there's been a VR device in right. my house because um i've been following oculus since the kickstarter like the original original kickstarter for the first one the one where you had a kit and you had to build it uh i don't remember if it was exactly like that but like the the first oculus kickstarter before it got bought by facebook and this whole huge thing right, right. so it's been like years and years and years um and i've been following it ever since then i remember like I looked at like Minecraft YouTubers who had VR and tried to play it in it and it looked really janky because it wasn't like, right. you know, set up for it and following, you know, Valve and the Vive and everything and making sure that when I built my computer that my specs would be good enough for VR if that ever came up. So that was never, uh, you know, a stop factor if I had other uh, things that were conducive to VR, like the space for it. Right. And, you know, I've watched VR people like YouTubers and stuff and people mm. play stuff in VR and looked at that type of thing. And it's really cool. We've, you know, gone to like virtual reality cafes and tried it out. We have rented uh, stuff to get a feel it, for it, it. It's a different experience too, right? When you're doing it in a cafe, it's basically like an arcade. So there's no continuity yeah. in playing that game at that moment. And I guess in the old days in the arcade, if you were really good, you could potentially get far enough that um, it would be as if you were, it was your own machine, right? Mm -hmm. Most of the time that's not true. Yeah. So we have it now and we're playing super hot and it's pretty special. So it's funny, funny fact. We have some super hot videos, yeah. not VR, that have been up that have not gotten a lot of views. So when people ask us, well, why don't you play something else? That is why mm -hmm. we do play. Well, not, I, I, I say we, you play other stuff. Yeah. But until people actually watch it, the, the effort that it takes to make videos is we're more not likely to just put it, yeah, put it into injustice. Although that video you did of, oh, that's, we're getting calls. Yeah, we're, we're very popular. Um, it, it's uh, it's really neat when we did a video of a combination, um, the real life video, and the on screen like what was happening in the game, mm -hmm. was a really interesting. It's a fun looking video. <laughs> yeah. So part of the problem is we couldn't make that type of content without uh, showing. I guess not our face face, but like yeah. most of us. Uh, but it yeah no it's it's pretty pretty cool we might have to make some vr content honestly potentially yeah uh just because it's fun uh but yeah so we're we're really i'm really enjoying that and so super hot for anybody who doesn't know you can look up super hot vr if you want to get a sense of it it's um there's a pc game that i've also followed since before it was a kickstarter um and it's really sort of stylish you're playing it's got like this like really bright like white concrete and then um, the sort of enemies are this like red shiny like glass looking people uh, and it, you play the game in slow motion uh, where it's basically freeze frame and then as you move uh, the game world sort of moves with you so time only moves when you move is its sort of tagline and it's really really cool I, I loved it in um, when I played this sort of demo that they made for a game jam like years ago uh, apparently in 2013 when I looked it up and then I followed it as it was a Kickstarter and I got it when it came out and I've, you know, played it and played it with friends and made content about it clearly. Right. Right. Uh, but playing it in VR, 
reminds me of sort of that experience of stumbling on something totally sort of unique when I played the game jam uh, right. version for the first time I'm going wow this is ridiculous this is so cool and that sort of like youthful excitement that I got and going <laughs> going into it in VR has made me sort of excited for this in a way that I haven't been about a video game in a really long time it's it's something really unique and special uh, and I find myself just sort of itching to get back to it like I'm trying to I'm doing other stuff Right. Like, I'll, I'll play, like, another game, or, like, I'm, like, working, or whatever, and I go, oh, Super Hot is so cool, and I just want to sit back into it, and I've already beaten the game, and it's not very long, if you're, like, relatively good at it, you know, I think I've only played for, like, a couple hours, right. maybe, like, two, two and a half hours, or something like that, maximum, and I've already beaten the main game, but there's these other modes, and I just want to, like, play the levels again, like, it's just, it's really sort of inherently fun, yeah. um, like even without like progression or whatever else and so i i think vr has hit this point where the oculus quest 2 is totally self-contained all i need to do is plug it in and charge it i don't need to have it connected to a computer i don't need anything and we're we're sort of like crawling around on the ground and doing spins yeah. and just totally sort of free feeling mm -hmm. and it's it's really good I mean, I've I've known that VR is something special for a while, and I've been itching to sort of use it for a long time, uh, and I've had some opportunities with it, but it's it's hard to describe how cool it is, and it's really cool for like a non gamer, too. Oh, I I, I don't play a lot of games. Yeah. Considering I play so much Injustice, I don't play. And a lot especially of games. not first person shooters. You oh, yeah. suck yeah. at first person shooters. I do. I do. Um, but there's something about again, it's all user interface, right? Yeah. Like when you talk about, so this is what what's so so amazing to me. So we went to the, we've been to those cafes as a family. Yeah. And it's the setups are wired. Mm -hmm. There's a whole hardware setup to bring the wire from the headset up top, so yeah. you don't walk into it all the time. Yeah. There's the hardware. And you still can't spin around too many times. Right. And then there's the hardware to delineate the area that you've got to move, so that it warns you when you're getting close to the edge. Right. Yeah. And when you look at all that, and, and then you have to be hooked up to the computer. Mm -hmm. When you look at all that, and then you look at this. Yeah. Like you're saying, self-contained. It's amazing. There's this sweet spot, I think, that we've hit. Yeah. Especially with the recent price drop on the um, the Oculus. Mm -hmm. what, so which one is this? Uh, Quest, Quest. Oculus Quest 2. I keep on forgetting. Yeah, it's the second that Oculus Quest. It's. I can't imagine that there's going to be... <sighs> that much demand for the cafes when it's this easy and this cheap yeah to play at home um without having to schedule your time around somebody else it's true because the advantage of there's a huge advantage to the console which is or playing it off of a pc or even like playstation vr which is that you have access to a lot more power right yeah um and there's t games that you can't do not on PC. I, we don't really have a setup for us to work with. We don't have space and PC sort of all in the same pl spot. Right. So we don't have a great way of doing that, those experiences right now. But for what you actually get at a VR cafe, you're not getting the type of experience that you only need a PC for. A lot, like, you know, <laughs> Super Hot. If you spend an hour playing Super Hot at a VR cafe, that's probably about as good as any other game that you could play. And you can totally run this just off local. So the advantage of being able to, even if you're limited by what games you can specifically play, the advantage of being able to play them sort of continuously in your home whenever you want, and the only sort of limitation is how well you've charged it, almost like it's a, like a phone, right? Right, right. Um, well, and I think I'd so get exhausted cool. before I ran out of battery time. Yeah. I, I mean, got exhausted. I got all sweaty. Yeah, it's a it's an intense experience. It that's the other advantage of it too, where it's it's gaming, and obviously it's still looking at a screen, right? It's not good for your eyes any better uh, than uh, a screen, or I guess I shouldn't say that because maybe you're focusing further and closer. I don't actually know. Yeah, uh, I don't know how either. it is for your eyes. I it's don't know not as good as just using them looking at the outside world. I'll say right with confidence. Right. Um, but it also is way less sedentary, right? I oh, mean, yeah. some games can be. It's not to say that every game is the same, but in general, it requires a lot more physicality and it demands a lot more. Uh, of it's like it's like light sort of aerobic exercise. This is the same. You're talking about 
the Oculus Quest, like people used to talk about the Nintendo Wii. Yeah, it's true, but it's like what the Wii wishes it could be. <laughs> um, the the f- interesting thing I learned something about Nintendo recently, which is that they they specifically target outdated technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they called it like one of the designers called it like withering technology, and that's one of the reasons why. Um, just they are the way that they are where like the Wii was like really old and really like not powerful um when they got it and so that's part of the reason why they innovate is because they need to do something different and cool to draw you in that's not the tech it's not just for the specs they're not interested in marketing to like an intense like hardcore gamer audience they're looking to market experiences to people so like the switch is not the strongest console at all it's like the weakest like specs of the console generation right, right. but what they did was they they <laughs> made the surrounding stuff they made the experience unique and different right by having it like a mixed like mobile and um console experience at once and you know clearly th- what they've done has been very successful because look at the steam deck right now right, right? um the steam deck is basically the nintendo switch but for pc right it's Mm. it's you you know you can't disconnect the controller but they're assuming that you don't want to it's there's a dock and it's something that you can take with you wherever you go and it's portable uh and it's really you know what the other interesting thing is that like this switch isn't even the first switch the psp and the ps vita were exactly what the Switch was too, right? Where it's portable and it's meant to be a console. And so Nintendo did it like years and years and years later and put sort of their own little spin on it and really caught it. So it isn't like a sort of new technology. And so the Oculus Quest and VR in general feels kind of like the Wii, but the Wii with like super, super cutting edge technology. Right. They've gone in right. sort of the opposite direction of Nintendo where they've gone hugely in the direction of horsepower yeah and and we can't ignore the cost either like i feel like we've hit a sweet spot and the, the, these are the kind that don't last long where the technology improves appreciably yeah at the same time as the price drops and i think a lot of times you get incremental improvements mm-hmm. wireless is huge for vr and sometimes i feel like we get um, incremental price drops every once in a yeah. while before something becomes obsolete and still has a price drop. Like this was, it was, I think list price now is $400 Canadian. Yeah. And um, it was, it dropped as low on sale for 330 Yeah. So when you look at the prices consoles have been historically, and then you factor in inflation, that is ridiculously cheap. Yeah, it's not a lot of money for, for how cool it is. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the tech is going to continue to get better. This is the other thing that I was following too, which is, that it's not used consistently, but for stuff like the uh, Valve's stuff, so the uh, HTC Vive and the Index, um, there is a pack that you can put on the back of your headset yeah. that replaces a wire. Where if you plug something into your uh, if you plug something into your computer uh, and then plug the pack in. Uh, So that you can like sort of stream and it's just really like high data like low latency like data streaming Yeah, Uh, and I was looking at that too and I was like wow, that's really Really cool. What we really need at this point now is to just either continue to be able to pack more and more Processing power into the sort of tiny comfy to fit on your head devices But I'd imagine that those would are gonna be super expensive for a super long time Like those aren't gonna get cheaper anytime soon um or speed up the connection. Or speed up the connection. Right. And, you know, there's other considerations, too, that I know matter to people, like the screen and the resolution, right? And, like, having, like, OLED pixels and having, like, less bleed through. Like, with this Quest, for example, if you look down through your nose piece, you can see outside. Right. Right? Um, so it's not, like, perfect. But it's it's more than good enough that I... There's stuff that I would care about if I was going to spend my whole life in VR. Right. Uh, and there's stuff that I would care about if I was going to spend a lot more time in it. But for the amount of time I have for stuff right now, the world kind of does just dissolve a little bit oh, when yeah. you get in there. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not looking at, like, my peripheral vision and going, oh, I'm missing peripheral. I couldn't even tell you what my field of view is in the thing. I know that's, like, a spec that matters to people. Yeah. But to me, it's just like, I'm in but it. This is the one issue I've always had with PC gaming, right? Yeah. Like, it feels like I'm 
my focus has been, or my field of view has been narrowed so much yeah. that I have trouble um, noticing or even seeing stuff to the side or up or down. Yeah. And this is totally immersive. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyways, that's, that's us talking about that. And now our less comments aren't going to be as much of a deal. I guess this is our ad for VR. If you have the opportunity to try VR. Oh yeah. Whew, it's cool. It's really cool. Yeah. So we've, we've got more games. If you have any VR game recommendations too. Oh, I'd love to hear that. Yeah. Uh, drop them in the comments. I, I enjoy the shooting game. Like just the, the training pistol game, like the practice game. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that a lot. It reminds me of, there's an arcade game. I think it was um, some sort of police kind of shooting game or some sort of shooting academy yeah and it reminds me a lot of that a lot of fun yeah so stuff on the oculus store but also potentially stuff on pc we have to get the cable and everything still we're i'm not sure how practical our pc vr is going to be but we'll uh we'll be trying some stuff out in the coming yeah. days uh so yeah our first question comes from realistic gameplays and they say um can you suggest good gold characters thanks so it's let me talk about the or question. It says he he thanks. He he thanks. Right. Sorry. So it's we can come up with lots of good gold suggestions. It's it, context is everything, right? Yeah. And in the comment on the on the question in, in the context itself, it's if you're still really you haven't finished story mode, it doesn't matter who your golds are. The, one of the things that we ignore a lot, and when you're early on, you can't ignore is the cost of the characters. Yeah. And the in store characters are always cheaper. They are really good, and I think if we're going to go with straight up in-store characters, you can't go wrong with Doomsday, because early on when you don't have a lot of the really good gear, especially the ones that let you sort of improve your uh, the characters that have like a power base passive. Yeah, healing when you knock somebody out is solid. Yeah, and his signature gear is really good too, because it's one of the basic... Uh, damage boosters, which mm -hmm. you'll need. It's got um, heal on special one, and it's unblockable chance if you're using it on a doomsday character. Yeah. Um, so, but really practically, if we're suggesting people for you, your suggestion is gold packs until you can beat um, the challenge, right? Uh, then grinding the challenge so that you can get as high of an elite level as possible, mm -hmm. right? And then... Um, I guess like it's a mix of like just who, who you're getting from gold packs and challenge packs. But honestly, like really, if you're just starting out, the the real advice is gold packs until you can beat the challenge, and then whatever whoever you get from the challenge, and then putting them together. And if you're at that stage where you're looking for good gold characters, there's not a great way because buying them in the store isn't a great deal most of the time. There's not a super great way of getting specific guys. So you're sort of just working with who you've got. And if you're grinding for credits and leveling up your people and developing people, yeah. uh, you're really going to be playing everybody you come in with. And so you're going to get the best sense of out of the people that you get lucky enough to get, uh, who's better and who's worse and how you like to use them. Right. So our advice here almost just isn't that useful. It, it strikes me that this, this kind of a question is very much a, a beginning player's kind of question. Because, so the natural progression is, you, as you play more, you see more challenges. As you get more challenge characters, you get better goals. Challenge characters, uh, in general, not necessarily, but in general, are better than the golds you get in the store. Yeah. Um, and once you get a challenge character, you start playing with it while you're waiting for the next challenge. Yeah. Then you get a sense if it's any good. You can decide if it's worth direct promotion because if you and if you're still playing mostly um story mode until you get to bonus battle six to grind for credits um it doesn't even matter how good they are because really what you're just looking for are higher stats yeah because the story mode favors um well it, it's it got equalization built in yeah it doesn't scale to your stats and so you just want the highest stats possible right because if you got worse stats it's <laughs> harder it's really hard to win whereas in online right. if you got worse stats but better strategy it's pretty doable to win right so as an example right the, the biggest factor to me is that without the gear you're without specific gear like tantu totem and master's death cart what you're doing is you're you're having to rely on a, a basic attack strategy and when you do basic attacks 
offline favors power generation when you're hit, but you get it. That means that if somebody's hitting you a lot and doing a lot of damage to you, you generate the power, and then all of a sudden you've got these specials that do yeah. way more damage. It, it's it's naturally equalization where in multiplayer, if you're good enough, you can limit the other team's ability yeah. to generate power. Because you're hitting somebody and dealing damage, and you're making power faster than them in online multiplayer. So you're dealing more basic damage and more special damage if you're doing better in online multiplayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas in offline, if you're doing more of one, you're doing less of the other. If you're doing more basic damage, they're hitting you with more specials. Yeah, yeah. 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 So... Hard question to the, answer. Yeah, so... And the, the baseline assumption I'm going to make is that because it's an er early game sort of question, then... I think your answer is actually the answer you gave is more useful than a direct answer, which is we can still just lots of good gold characters. Yeah. Like Batman Prime is a good way, I think, to boost uh, the damage stat without actually um, having strong characters. Yeah, but it doesn't help you to know that. It doesn't help us for us to list gold characters for you that are good. Yeah. Unless I guess you're hacking or you are using somebody's account when they're done with it. Yeah. Uh, or something like that. But you know we still need to know what you have if if the question is i have every single character but i don't know who's any good then you're doing you tell it me wrong. Who's good <laughs> then you either need the friend who helped you out with the account to tell you or if you've hacked it you just need to try it yourself <laughs> yeah it, it really is yeah it's a it's um i'll tell you who's the best get the flashpoint team those are the three yeah <laughs> uh, so speaking of flashpoint actually we've got this next question that's a bunch of them all at once uh, so this is good content. So, Corin Calm says, uh, What's a good online team? Like, should I grind out a team that helps each other, or should I patch up one? Uh, so that's the first part of the question. I guess uh, we'll say the other part. And how do you have so many credits slash nth metal? Is it a glitch or just grinding? So, the credits and nth metal, it's both glitches and grinding, right? We're grinding out glitches. Like, every time we do the challenge reset, uh, every time we do the yeah. Phantom Zone reset, right? Yeah. That's uh, getting more of that resource by glitching although i will tell you that now that the the phantom zone i don't know if this is going to be they're going to keep up with it where the phantom zone is one week yeah one week on a couple of counts is as much as i'm playing to uh be able to finish it without actually resetting it yeah so it's less helpful when it's only a, a week or well, one week event yeah, so it's our credits and our our stuff in our account is a mix of glitching and grinding, but it's not like any like get rich quick glitch to answer the yeah, question. Yeah. And I so, mean those are gone long gone yeah. right now. What's a good online team? Should I grind out a team that helps each other or should I patch up one? Is an interesting question too. If you can grind out a team that helps each other, that's obviously way better, right? Your sort of long term goal is always synergy. So uh, grinding out a team that um that helps each other out is is the goal yeah but you know you can patch up one you can patch up an online team that works for you the important part when you're doing teams is you need something to give you an edge when you're fighting guys with higher stacks than you yeah. and there's two ways that you can get an edge uh and we do both but you can do one or the other you, i guess there's three ways to get an edge one way is just being good at the game right but that's not something that we can really help you with that's something that you just need more practice or you are or you aren't, right? So there's right. no sort of advice there. Because there's so much going on potentially that there's... I mean, when you watch our multiplayer videos, you'll get a sense of it when we talk about why people are in certain slots, why there's certain gears, why in this situation or that situation we made a decision to tag this person in or that person instead of what our other options are. Yeah. So there's a lot going on. But, I mean, there's a limited amount. Once you play it, you get a better feel for what's yeah. actually happening. Uh, so being good at the game is one way of getting an edge on people with higher stats than you. The other two ways are having good uh, passive synergy, right? Uh, and having good uh, gears. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I guess... You know, you could say just having like good individual characters if their passive is good enough and, yeah. you know, ignoring synergy, like having just good passives. But so if you have gears that are solid, that'll mm -hmm. give you an edge. And then you're probably OK to have a, a patched up team as long as each person is good by themselves. Right. Uh, as long as you have uh, not like passive synergy, but just like somebody who can tank a little bit better, somebody who yeah. can do basic damage, somebody who can do specials, that kind of like basic team composition then a patched up team with decent gear is fine. If you don't have any gear, you're probably gonna really struggle with a patched up team to right. complete uh, longer fights, right. Right. right? 
Uh, so and I, it, it's not that we're ignoring this, but gear comes faster than maxing your critical chance and critical damage augmentations. That's true. Yeah. So that that's the other way, but I mean, you're not going to be getting there that fast without actually being able to use some of your gears to make them better. And the other reason I'm not mentioning that is that if you have a patched up team instead of a synergy team, you probably don't want to be burning your critical augments on that team. You yeah. probably want to wait until you actually have a team that you you can grow it. Like if you have a flashpoint team at like a low elite level uh, and you're sort of working your way up with them, then that's the people that you go, I'm going to use these guys forever, right? There's never going to be a day. Uh, unless the game updates and things change so drastically that they suck, which yeah, I have yeah. a hard time believing. But there's never going to be a day that I can't use this team. <laughs> that's when that's who you want to dump your uh, crit chance and right. uh, crit damage augments into. Right. So, long term, uh, grind out a team that helps each other. Short term, uh, yeah, patch up a team where like you get their stats relatively leveled out and get some good gear on them, yeah. I think. I... I I just had a thought actually about the the first or the second part of the questions you answered first, and it just occurs to me that because we talked about so much, it feels like everybody should already know it. The other part is that we've been playing so long. The reason why we have so much um, power credits is because we got nothing to spend it on. Yeah. And as far as the nth metal goes, that's also almost true because the only person that I really want to spend it on in terms of promoting them was Catwoman, Batman Ninja Catwoman. We've got her to Elite Three. The number of packs that you'd have to spend it on to buy um, doesn't make it worth it and it would put her out of proportion to the other team members that we'd want to play her with mm -hmm. so we just haven't been spending the anthem out. once we hit elite three with that Ninja catwoman just holding on to it mm -hmm. yeah so there we go and so there's a little bit more here uh also how do you get the other flashpoint characters you wanna oh take that quick it feels like Flashpoint Batman was not um, was in the, the challenge not too long ago, and uh, Flashpoint Deathstroke and Flashpoint Aquaman are multiplayer exclusives. And when I say exclusive, I use that term loosely because there's times where um, you can pick them up in special packs, yeah. whether they're for money or I think the nth metal packs potentially they're available too. But really, the best way is the only way to get them consistently. Yeah, yeah, is either a huge time expenditure. Um, of like resetting or a pretty big money expenditure if they're in a pack guaranteed, right? For real money yeah. um, or online multiplayer. So online is really your best bet at yeah. them. And, and so here's the thing too. They're a great team for online. So you can grind through it really fast. If you don't have them, you're going to be working a little bit harder to get them. So it's a slow accumulation, but because they were at least a part of the regular cycle, mm -hmm. you just wait, be a little bit patient. You don't need that many copies. Um, top 1% you get three copies and I think Elite 5 where we've got them right now is probably ideal. Yeah. Maximum battle points, you get through multiplayer fast so that the next time there's a multiplayer reward this team is perfect. Mm -hmm. But you can't, you, you can't ignore the fact that part of it is the team, the synergy which means playing a lot of multiplayer get the characters, plus the gears <coughs> which also means playing multiplayer and survivor. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's one of the things. I mean, this game does a pretty good job of making you play all of its modes, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anything is useless. They do... You get at least one thing that you can't get anywhere else in each game mode that is pretty good. Yeah. Right? You can't skip out on the challenge. You can't skip out on single player. <coughs> There's not really any one spot where you can go, oh, I just don't want to engage with this. Yeah. I guess maybe Breakthrough is yeah. the only one uh, where you never actually need to need to. Yeah. Uh, but it's nice. So... Yeah. You know, I guess I kind of contradict myself a little bit. But anyways, um, our... The last bit. Yeah, the last part of the question is, how much <laughs> extra damage does Arkham Origins Joker Special 1 get from other Arkham characters? Like, how does it calculate? Okay, so I, now I want to give a plug to the Injustice Mobile uh, wiki. Yeah. Which is super useful. Oh Whenever my god, it's so well maintained. Yeah, yeah. All right, so his passive... Um, means that both of his specials, or so I, I don't include his super is technically a special three, but it's you know a super only a special one, a special two. Uh, five seconds damage, uh, two percent each second, total of ten percent um, base uh, damage over time. That's poison. Yeah. Gear doesn't make a difference. Um, 
how well you are at doing the mini game for the special it makes no difference. Yeah. Um, and so you increase it by a hundred percent for every Arkham teammate. Um, so, it, so Arkham Knight Catwoman, for example, only benefits from Arkham Knight teammates. Arkham Origins Joker benefits from any Arkham character, Arkham Origins, uh, Arkham Knight, or just plain Arkham. Yeah. Um, so it's also actually last week we had a question about Batman Returns Catwoman. It's also affected by Batman Returns Catwoman, whose passive will double it. So the best way then, I guess, the most damage you can get out of his damage over time is yeah. adding the hundred from an Arkham teammate, mm -hmm. then doubling that two hundred percent. And so because if you're looking at the base damage uh, over the ten seconds, you will do his attack stat forty yeah. percent of that. If they st the opponent stays on screen for five the full, seconds, yeah, five yeah. seconds versus thirty percent if you just have uh, two other Arkham people, right? right. Um, and it, so poison is interesting. It's got uh, my favorite damage over time effect is still bleed because um, it's a offensive thing. You you just do more damage. You get, so you get a twenty percent damage boost. Mm -hmm. Poison, I think you get whoever's poison does 20% reduce damage to you which is fine yeah which is fine but it's again it's a uh, a defensive kind of benefit yeah because if, if you're you have to imagine the situation in which you're playing really well and so getting extra damage means that you're dealing 120% damage and if they're dealing less damage to you uh, you know 20% of zero is zero so if they're not hitting you uh, you're not getting anything done with it right so we always sort of play for that because in a lot of cases we're not getting hit very much and we're <laughs> hitting them way more and way harder right so the poison only works if immediately after a special you're getting dinged by somebody which you know hopefully is not happening so you know like right now on our video right you know, if <laughs> poison might be helpful yeah but you know the, the when you look at how much damage we take, we're not actually close to dying. So that 20% was not going to make the difference between us living and dying. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, you know, we might kill somebody a hit quicker uh, if we got bleed on them. Yeah. So yeah. And there we go. All That's right. through our, all of our questions for the week. So I guess we'll just watch this last little bit. Boom. 40% saving is not Apologies bad. to anybody who's on the podcast only. You're you're missing out on the uh, visuals part. And there you go. And now we're stuck. Yeah. Okay, it was frozen. Oh. All right. So we can do our outro here. We've yep. got some people to thank. Uh, a shout out to Eliza. Uh, I forgot to write something in for this one. So I'm just going to say cat lover, Kate. And she loves cats a whole lot. She likes her own cat a lot. She loves uh, CB, our cat, a lot. She she just has a lot of fondness for cats in her heart. Hmm. Uh, and this shout-out was brought to you by uh, just off the top of the dome right now, by my head. Uh, <laughs> and also a, a gentle fondness for uh, little, little creatures. Yeah. And we would also like to give a big thank you to our supporters, our patrons on Patreon. And that would be uh, Victor Gomez, Consul Peasant, and Ed Woon at the highest tier, uh, last word. Cinemac and Mohamed Albshady at the Your Message Here tier. Sean Farrell, Daniel Simonson, Aaron Mall, Michael DeVries, Brandon C., Irvin Ruiz, and Eddie Dew, who are supporting us on the credited level. And Chris Wolf, Scarlet Danny, Awesome Beaver 2 for 1, Pavu RS, Gavin Malot, and Isfar E at the gratitude level. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Komoda. Komoda.